Okay, we will uh, continue our discussion of uh, uh, drops and drop size distributions in sprays and uh, we will uh, begin with a few questions and uh, try to answer them. drop size distributions we came across a spatial drop size distribution and a temporal drop size distribution. What is the primary difference between the two drop size distributions? Okay. The question relates to uh, different measurement techniques uh, of measuring drop size distributions in sprays. Uh, we discussed spatial sampling and temporal sampling. We want to see if we can maybe uh, use an illustrative example to differentiate between the two in some in a but it will be a simplistic illustrative example but sufficient to understand the complexities involved Okay, let us take uh, a couple of mono disperse droplet generators. So, these are mono disperse generators I will number them 1 and 2. The whole idea of mono disperse means that they are producing drops of one size. Okay, let us say um, these drop the generator 1 and let us we will just call this example problem number 1 for now. Let us say the droplet from uh, generator 1 is 100 micrometers. So, essentially it is producing a stream of droplets that are all diameter d 1 moving with some velocity v 1 and they are produced at some let us say we will give these some numbers let us say 1 meter per second and the number rate of production is let us say 10 per second. So, we are producing 10 drops of 100 micron diameter per second and each one is being ejected out from the needle at a speed of 1 meter per second in the axial direction. Want you to note that the number frequency is nothing to do with velocity they are completely different measures of how fast the drop, drop may be moving. Likewise, we will say we will say D 2 is much smaller let us say it is only 10 micrometers. We will start by looking at the situation where V 2 and N 2 are the same. We will see what uh, this generator would give us in the uh, for a spray. So, essentially my atomizer is com is composed of two uh, little needles one producing 100 micron drops and another producing 10 micron drops. If I take a region of interest that includes the tip of this nozzle let us say something that is 1 meter in diameter and the width really does not matter this is the this is my imaging is the imaging interrogation area or imaging area. So, that is that is the area that my camera is capturing. So, a simple way could be that I have a backlight and the backlight is illuminating the drops 
and when I view from the front I see the shadow of the drops. So, the individual shadows uh, form circles in a snapshot in a in a frozen picture and from those individual circles I can get the size of each droplet. Okay. Since I am producing, so let us see if each droplet is moving at 1 meter per second and uh, the spacing between droplets is 1 tenth of a second. So, the production spacing between droplets is 1 tenth of a second and so if I take one snapshot that is 1 meter in height let us say the time spacing between drops is 1 by 10 seconds. This is coming from the fact that n 1 I will call this n 1 dot that is number production rate. So, if I take n 1 and n 2 both are 10 per second which means I am producing drops one drop every one tenth of a second which is the same as saying the time spacing between the drops is one tenth of a second. Since the uh, velocity of the drop is one meter per second if the interrogation area has a height of one meter the drop is going to be resident in there for 1 second. Okay. So, the second thing is to do with the residence time. It's 1 second. which means I am going to if I take a snapshot if I take a snapshot I am going to have Ten of diameter D one and ten of diameter D two. Okay, so if I now look at in any given snapshot, I want to calculate. Let us say the simple arithmetic mean diameter, which is sum of sum over all the drops D i divided by n. Okay. If I do this I have 10 times 100 micrometers plus 10 drops of 10 micrometers divided by 20 which happens to give me a number like 55 micrometers. This is the diameter I get I will put this d s for spatial sampling. For the same situation if I if I do temporal sampling. So, this is same spatial sampling mean diameter equal to 55 micrometers. For the same spray if I do a temporal sampling what do I get? So, the whole idea of temporal sampling is that I am going to 
remain at some cross section here let us say okay this is my sampling position and i am going to accrue statistics of drops passing through this point i'll call this cross section aa okay i am going to measure so the next thing we'll talk about is temporal sampling the steps involved are measure the diameter <coughs> passing through aa over a fixed this is very important period of time okay so how do what happens if i do this now i know that i am producing 10 drops per second which means if i sample for 1 second I will do it uh, just to move away from 1. If I sample for 2 seconds, I would have sampled 20 100 meter 100 micron drops and 20 10 micron drops. So, again I can calculate that uh, the temporal mean diameter So, as it turns out the temporal mean diameter is also 55 microns. Now, we have two parameters characterizing two separate uh, measures of a time associated with the drop. One is the velocity, another is the uh, frequency of production. So, we will keep the same frequency of production and see what happens if we change the velocity okay, that is our first uh, test. So, I will now take the exact same situation except I am going to make this V 2. So, I will call this my example 2. Okay, example 1 was fairly straightforward we got the same mean diameters whether you sample in the time in time domain or whether you sample in the spatial domain. So, now if the drop is moving fast and I will go back to the same exact uh, spatial
Now, the drops are moving fast, these drops are moving at 10 meters per second. in relation to these drops that are only moving at 1 meter per second, but the time spacing in the production is exactly the same. So, if I did a, a spatial sampling just like I did before, consider spatial sampling first. If I, if the drop is moving at 10 meters per second and the length of this whole thing is 1 meter, it takes 1 tenth of a second to traverse the whole meter. Okay. Whereas, I am producing 1 drop of 10 microns every one tenth of a second. So, what are all the possibilities for how my right side of the image will look like? Okay, so, I want to distinguish between the right and left side because it is like a very simple spray, it is like a bi dis two mono dispersed sprays so, or superposed and if we understand how this works, we can get a feel for how the real spray works. So, the drops that are 10 microns in diameter are moving at 10 meters per second that is a given drop is in this frame for only one tenth of a second. So, I have three possibilities for the right half depending on how my one depending on whether I am when I take the snapshot. I could have one drop somewhere in the middle of the frame like that okay. and uh, there is the time before the next drop is produced is like further in the future compared to my frame and the previous drop has already exited the domain. So, I could have one drop in the in the frame. or there is also a very remote instance say for example, if this was not 1 meter, but 0 0.9 meters okay, or slightly less than 1 meter. I could also have the instance where the drop has just exited and I have not yet produced the next drop on the right half. So, I will have no 10 micron drop. I could also have again if it is slightly greater than 1 meter, I could have the instance where I have one drop just about to exit and another drop just about to be produced. So, really speaking I have this one drop in the frame somewhere in the frame or I could have no drop or two drops. These are all remote possibilities and only when L is not equal to 1 meter exactly. Okay, if L equal to 1 meter then if this is exactly mathematically correct then it has to I will only see one drop the drop has to exit before I see the other drop. Okay. So, really speaking the only possibility we want to look at seriously is this one drop of 10 microns that is the only possibility. On the left hand side nothing has changed I will still see 10 drops right because the time production of each drop is uh, the time uh, separation between each pair of drops is one tenth of a second and they are all queued up one behind the other. So, in one meter physical space I will have 10 drops one behind the other if they are all moving at one meter per second. Okay. So, essentially I could have if I do this spatial sampling correctly. Ten 
100 micron drops and 1 10 micron drop. So, if I do my spatial mean average approximately 92 microns. If I do the time sampling, let us see what we find. So, temporal sampling on the same system. is based on the fact that I have uh, one drop coming through here every one tenth of a second and so if I again sample for 2 seconds I will get 10 or 10 times to 20 uh, hundred micron drops and twenty ten micron drops right for sample for two seconds. Which means Again, if I do the So, if I look at what happens, what is it that I am measuring when I do spatial sampling, what is it that I am measuring when I do time sampling. If I time sample uh, at for 2 seconds, that means I am getting 20 drops that are moving that are uh, at uh, 100 microns. Now, you have the sampling and um, it is like a sampling cross sectional area in which I am allowing these drops to go through. So, every time a drop goes through I have a way of getting its diameter measuring its diameter. So, the rate at which drops can go through here in a steady spray has to exactly equal the production frequencies. Whatever be the production frequencies that is what I end up measuring here. Okay. So, what you get in a time sampled in the time uh, sampling in the time domain is is basically related to your n 1 dot and n 2 dot. We can look at an example 3 where we go back to v 2 being 1 meter per second and n 1 dot or n 2 dot being let us say 100 per second or, or 1 per second. Okay. You will see that. So, let us let us actually complete that example just so we gain our complete understanding of the whole problem. Uh, 
I want to go back to example 3 where v 2 is back to being 1 meter per second, but v n, n 2 is now down to 1 per second. When you do that you end up seeing now I am going to erase this part here because it corresponds to the previous example. But what do I uh, what could I possibly uh, look for when I do spatial sampling in this? The fact that I am only producing um, that all the drops are moving at 1 meter per second. Okay. So, in any the drop is resident in this frame for 1 second, but I am producing only 1 drop per second. So, if I look at what what I will end up observing So, if we look at uh, the rate of production of the drops of size 2 in this example 3, it is 10 times slower than the si rate of production of drops of size 1. So, if I do spatial probability sp spatial sampling, I am producing 1 drop per second and that one drop is going to move at 1 meter per second. That is the drop that is produced will remain I only have one possibility that they will only have that there will be one drop in the frame. The other three where it is just about to exit or just about to be produced are, are sort of rare events. So, two drops and no drops are both rare events. So, in the in the 1 meter frame that I have the only possibility is that I will have 1 drop resident in there it is moving at 1 meter per second and it is going to take 1 second to traverse through the frame and it is not it is going to be 1 second at uh, after this drop is produced that the next drop will be produced. So, whereas on that is as for that is the story for the left half or for the right half for the left half the story is not changed. So, if I do the spatial sampling what I have is 10 drops Now, does the size of the domain make a difference? So, if I have instead of 1 meter, if I sampled over 2 meters, will that make a difference? <coughs> Chances are again the drops are spaced. So, the 
for any given drop d i ok. So, let us say in this case I take a situation where V i divided by n i dot is and let us say L is the sampling domain height. I will take a situation where I have uh, L is much much greater than any of V i divided by n i dot. Okay, so, let us say I will recreate this situation where V i is not 1 meter per second, but let us say 10 centimeters per second or 1 centimeter per second and n i dot is uh, like 1 per second or 10 per second and we end up packing the drops much closer now. Okay. Will this if L is very large in comparison to the max of V i dot V i divided by n i dot what you end up seeing is that you are you will have these kinds of possibilities of whether I have 99 drops or 100 drops on the right hand side as opposed to 1 or 2. So, the percentage error associated with with the number of drops being slightly different on one side versus the other keeps going down. So, the spatial sampling gives you a result that is closer to the production rate sampling to the time rate sampling. Think of an extreme situation where I could sample an infinitely long domain in which case every drop produced is all is at the moment present in the domain. So, if I took a snapshot of this domain it cannot be different from having sampled every drop produced in time. So, essentially when we say spatial sampling and temporal sampling they are different as far as finite times of sampling are concerned. It is only when I say I am sampling over 1 meter sampling over 2 seconds that you will get two separate answers. If you go to the extreme case of sampling over an infinitely long domain or and an infinitely long time those two answers are exactly the same those are true representations of the production rate that is the SMD or that is a mean diameter based on the production rates is what I can completely tie to the atomizer performance everything else could be an artifact of the way I am sampling in the spray. Right. So, essentially if I take these two sprays and if I have L be much greater than V i divided by n i dot then the spatial sampling and the temporal sampling become very close to each other. And I will say that both of these would end up becoming equal to the production sampling. Actually production sampling is something that is already exactly equal to the temporal sampling, but just to sort of have a physical feel for sampling in time being different from sampling at the nozzle exit. If I now look at I can now come back and quantify this effect of this size of the domain. So, in going let us say instead of 1 meter if I went up to 10 meters same exact system what are the possibilities that I have here instead of 3 possibilities I actually have many more, but we will rewrite this.
if I am sampling over a 10 meter long domain same rest of the performance characteristics are the same I am producing one drop every second and I have 10 drops of uh, n i n 1 dot being produced. So, essentially I have uh, 10 drops that are 10 microns in size. and 10 drops that are 100 microns the spacing between sorry 110. So, I will I will have 100 drops that are uh, 100 microns in size the spacing between a pair of drops being the same for the L 1 is 0 0.1 meters I will call this L 1 So, if the size was 10 meters I will still end up getting uh, the the proportion of the drops d 1 to d 2 would still remain the same, because the physical spacing between them is still the same. Okay, so, the mean drop sizes tends towards this uh, the temporal sampling mean drop size, the spatial mean drop size tends towards the temporal drop size as long as the sampling uh, remains distinct as long as the sampling domain is of a finite size as you go to a larger and larger domain size they the two values converge to a particular unit.